Good morning. In the Gospel of John, we are moving quickly towards the great culmination of what John 6 is intended to teach us about Jesus Christ and the bread of life. Today in the Gospel, of course, Jesus presents to us the strong and undeniable connection between Eucharist and heaven. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have life within you. But whoever eats this bread will live forever. Whoever eats this bread, whoever receives this gift of Holy Communion will live forever. We as Catholics must understand that the Eucharist and heaven are intimately linked one to another. And the Eucharist is for us the foretaste of heaven. The Eucharist points us to heaven and secures our path into the great kingdom of God in the world beyond. And so today, I'd like to talk to you about how the Mass, how the Eucharist is for us the means and the foretaste of the kingdom of heaven. There's a famous allegory that has been told. I'm sure that some of you have heard this, but nevertheless, I think will illustrate a bit our understanding of what the Eucharist really is and how it leads us to heaven. In this allegory, the story goes that someone asked God, Lord, what is the difference between heaven and hell? And God showed this person a vision. And in the vision, first of all, God revealed to him what hell was like. And in hell, the man saw a long, beautiful banquet table arrayed with all kinds of wonderful morsels of food, delightful taste, rich, wonderful bounty of anything you could imagine, the most beautiful table that you could ever perceive. And along both sides of the table, people were sitting And each of them had a very long spoon, but no elbows. And so they could reach the food with their spoon, but they couldn't feed themselves. They could not eat the food that was on the table. And this beautiful banquet turned into chaos and anger and fighting and hatred and jealousy and rivalry and bitterness. And this scene of beautiful bounty was turned into chaos and hatred. Next, the man was shown the vision of heaven. He was shown the exact same table with copious bounty and beautiful foods and rich, sweet food and drinks. In the kingdom of heaven, everyone was lined up on both sides of the table again, and they were given a very long spoon. And the man was surprised that in heaven also, no one had elbows. But instead of being upset and offended and angry and bitter, what happened in heaven is that the people would take the food with their spoon and they would feed the person sitting across from them so that in heaven, they shared. They lived community, and they experienced love in the midst of something that would appear a defect. I think this illustrates for us what the Eucharist should be for us and how it points us to heaven. Because here, my dear friends, in this church, we are a community of faith And we are called really to love one another in the midst of our defects. We know that all of our neighbors, you know the people sitting next to you, that they're gossips and that they have short tempers and that they're lazy and all the other things, right? Including most especially the members of your own family. We know all these things. We're all a mess. But here we say, Nevertheless, I love that person in all their messiness, and I accept them as a member of the kingdom of heaven, as a fellow traveler to the kingdom of God's delight. And here we eat a bounty which is greater than that vision, because we eat the bounty which is the very body, blood, 
soul and divinity of Jesus Christ. And when we have been nourished at this meal, we go out in order to nourish one another with what we have received. The Eucharist points us to heaven, to true community where there is no sin, to true love where we really accept every, everyone, one another in perfect harmony and where we commune in the banquet, which is the very banquet of God's presence forever and ever. This church should be viewed by us as the antechamber to heaven. It's like, here we are in this church, and we're just waiting for the door to heaven to open so that we can enter in. And in fact, it does open. Every single Sunday, the door to heaven opens in, and although we are not necessarily allowed to enter, heaven comes down into our midst, and Jesus places himself on the altar in the hidden form of bread and wine. This antechamber every Sunday is truly open to the reality of heaven. And it is only, my dear friends, it is only that if we come here every Sunday after Sunday and we see the doors of heaven open and we catch a glimpse and we participate in the foretaste of this banquet through the Holy Eucharist that we will be ready when the end of our life comes to actually pass through those doors in order to live forever in the true kingdom of heaven where all sacraments will cease. Here on earth, we need the sacraments. We need our blessed Lord the Eucharist to feed us, to nourish us, to strengthen us, to give us a clearer vision of heaven. But when we pass into the kingdom of heaven, sacraments will cease. We won't need the sign and the symbol of God's presence because we will live truly gazing upon him forever face to face. We experience here, my dear friends, in this Mass, legitimate community, though we are sinners. We partake of the great banquet and we receive the sacrament of the Eucharist in preparation for heaven. This Eucharist is the deepest intimacy that is available to our human nature while here on earth. Because God literally, in the Eucharist, enters our body and soul. And we know that by eating this bread of life, because Jesus himself says it, that we have the promise of heaven. For whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the flesh that I will give, excuse me, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. We eat the flesh of the lamb sacrificed here in order to be prepared for heaven. There's a beautiful story told in the tenth, uh, from the 10th century. Apparently, the leader of Russia, Prince Vladimir, desired to know God. This is a true story. He wanted to know who is the true God. And so he sent emissaries two by two around the known globe in order to search for the true and living God so that he could worship the true God. According to the story, two of these emissaries went to Constantinople and they walked into the ancient Christian church of Hagia Sophia. And when they walked into the church of Hagia Sophia, the divine liturgy was underway. Mass was taking place. And they were so overwhelmed with the experience of participating for the first time in the divine liturgy of the Holy Mass that they went back to Prince Vladimir and they said to him these words, when we entered the Christian church, it was so beautiful. We did not know whether we were in heaven or still on earth. When Prince Vladimir hear, heard these words, he was convinced of the truth of the Catholic Christian faith. He became a Christian, and with him, the entire nation. He saw, and the emissaries saw, that what we do here points us to heaven. Even if sometimes the homily is boring, or not here, but sometimes the music might, something bad might happen, who knows, or it's too hot or too cold or whatever, 
with all the weaknesses of our humanity present in the liturgy, my dear friends, here we have a foretaste of heaven. Here we eat the body and blood of Jesus, and we are made ready and fit to enter the kingdom of God, our Lord Jesus Christ. The Mass is the source and summit of our entire Christian faith. It is the preparation and foretaste for heaven, and therefore, my friends, let us love the Mass with all of our hearts. Let us place the Mass at the center of our spiritual being so that we may taste and see the goodness of the Lord.